Hello and welcome back to a brand new video with me Tom from The Honest Meeple. Today I'm going to be showing you something brand new. This is going to be a new set of videos telling you how to play some of the very best board games. Today I thought I'd start off with something new. I'm going to teach you how to play Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell, a board game of English magic. Designed by Marco Maggi and Francesco Nepotello and illustrated by Ian O'Toole. This game is based on the original novel by Susanna Clarke and you the player will take on the role of one of four characters from the original book. You will have to make your way across Europe and London growing your prestige as well as your magicianship in order to defeat, to defeat the evil gentleman with the thistle down hair. This game uses various different elements to create something that is very close to the actual novel. As mentioned today I'm going to show you how to play so let's begin. What you can see in front of you is the setup of Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell, a board game of English magic. What we have is the main board in the centre, as well as seven different sets of cards, the player boards, as well as the player tokens, and markers. In this game, you must grow your prestige and your magicianship in order to take on the man with the thistle down hair. The beauty of this game is it is a fine balance between both prestige and magicianship. Grow your prestige and you will be given vast opportunities to increase your magicianship. However, focus too much on prestige, and unfortunately your magicianship will lag behind. If your magicianship lags behind, you can never think about taking on the man with the thistle down hair, and he will streak in his reign of glory and magic, and will become the greatest magician known to man. However, take him on and succeed, and you will be crowned the greatest magician not just in London, not just in Europe, but in the entire world. So, let's take a look at the different cards that are available throughout the game and get a better understanding of each element within the game. Before we get into the turn phases of the game, I think it's important to introduce the concepts and components of the game. Firstly, we're going to look at the two main cards that make up a player's hand, the social engagements, both invitations and introductions. Invitations represent the social events that are attended across Europe. Once you attend them, you can get introductions to influential people and receive requests to perform great feats of magic. You can, of course, use these cards to get the elements, which are shown in the top left corner. You can, however, fulfil them by moving to the location dictated on the left-hand side of the card and choosing to either obtain two feats of magic, two introductions, or a combination of the two. Introductions represent the important people of the era whom you have the opportunity to visit. By meeting them you will earn prestige shown on the card which affects turn order and lets you hire connections. The prestige value as mentioned is shown on the left hand side of the card. You can of course use the elements again in the top left corner however in order to gain the prestige points you must again move to the location shown on the left to fulfill that certain card. Next up are the feats of magic. Completing these feats of magic is essential for growing your magicianship and lets you discover new spells at the same time. Of course, growing your magicianship is vital in defeating the man with the thistle down hair. The magicianship value is shown in the top left corner of the cards. This will be obtained once the feat of magic has been completed. Of course, in order to complete the feats of magic, you must fulfill the elemental requirements shown on the card, as you can see. In this case, you must fulfill three reign in order to gain this feat of magic and the three magicianship points that come with it. Now let's look at spells. These spells are obtained once a feat of magic has been completed. These spells will grant you a one-time bonus or can be discarded to gain one prestige. In this case, this card is fairly self-explanatory, a spell to travel quickly. It will enable the user to gain one additional move that turn or can be discarded for one prestige point as seen on the bottom. Next up are named connections. These connections are even more useful than the connections you'll make throughout the game. 
you'll get the chance to obtain these named connections at four points throughout the game. These are shown by this symbol on the prestige track. Once you hit this on the prestige track, you will get to take a choice from two face-up cards. They will grant you one-time bonuses that are similar to those of the, of the abilities shown at the bottom of the player board, but are slightly different. In this case, Vinculus, the Street Magician, will allow you to place a free spell element token that can be played this turn. Saying that it can be played this turn means it must be displayed on the card of Marseille, or, as an action, you must have allowed yourself to use that element during your turn. Talking of the player board, let's take a look at this now. As you can see, it's fairly simple in its layout. You have the large silver pan here with six different actions that can be taken on a player's turn, as well as the various effects at the bottom that are used throughout the game. On a player's turn, they can choose one of these six actions, the top three being element related, which we'll discuss later, as well as a unique action and two others that will allow you to either take a book of magic or move your player token anywhere on the board. The bottom actions here are less actions, but more abilities, much like the ones we've just seen on the named connections. You can choose to take these abilities when you land on the spaces on the prestige track as discussed earlier. These are not one-off, these will remain throughout the game. So it's up to you how you want to balance it. Do you want a powerful one-off bonus or do you think one of these at the bottom will benefit you? For example, obtaining the pupil ability will give you three magicianship points automatically. The coachman will allow you during one of your moves each turn to move up to two locations instead of one. The Street Magician will allow you to discard two matching elements to place an element of any kind of your choosing. It's up to you how you use these throughout the game. Books of Magic are vital throughout the game in order to empower you to do magic more effectively and increase your magicianship. There are three main types of Books of Magic in the game. These can be obtained as an action from your player board. The first type allows you to discard a chosen element shown on the card and gain two of those instead of just one. In this instance, you can discard any element to obtain the rain element as a token, or in this final case, you can discard a rain element token and gain any token of your choosing. You must remember that if you are to take one of your choosing, it must be an element that is shown either on the card of Marseille or be one that you have taken an action for on your player board. Once a book of magic has been used in your turn, you may place it face down. These are then refreshed at the end of your turn, as long as the fairy hasn't been defeated. These are the cards of Marseille. These aren't necessarily used by the player, but are instead used by the gentleman with the thistle down hair, the fairy. These cards dictate how far the fairy moves forward on his track, these, this track will illustrate his magicianship. If you beat this total or match it, you win the game. As you can see in the top corners of these cards, they show a value, that's how many spaces he moves forward. Also, there will be a value shown in a card symbol at the right corner of each card. That is how many cards you will draw at the end of your turn. Finally, the most important bit are the symbols at the bottom of the card. There will be one or two symbols on these cards. That will show you which elements you can use throughout that turn. If an element isn't on these cards, you cannot use it unless you use one of your magician actions or you are lucky enough to have Jonathan Strange as your unique action. As you can see, the setup of the game is fairly simple and the concepts and the different elements within the game are fairly quick to get your head round. Now, let's see how a turn pans out and how you actually get to grips and play Jonathan Strange and Mr Noel, a board game of English magic. Now that we've understood each different element within the game, let's see how a turn will be prepared and taken by each player. It's important to remember that you start with three preparation steps throughout the game. Firstly, you want to move the year token at the top of the board up one space. If it's your first turn, don't do this. 
the year token will remain on 1806 for the first turn. Secondly, you want to reveal a card of Marseille. We've already done this. This card will not only dictate how far the fairy moves forward, but also how many cards will be drawn at the end of the turn. More importantly, however, it will show you what element can be used throughout the turn. If an element isn't on this card, it cannot be used. But don't worry, you can use actions to counter this later on. Once you've drawn this card, you then have to draw a new book of magic, seen on the side of the board here. If it's your first turn, again, don't do this. However, if you were to do it, you would simply take the card that's lowest down the board, discard it, pull the two cards down, and place a new card face up at the top of the track. Once these three preparation steps have been done, you're ready to take your actions and attempt to defeat the man with the thistle down hair. Let's start by taking a look at the player board. The player board is nicely set out. As mentioned, you have the various abilities at the bottom, as well as the unique action and the actions that can be taken throughout the game. You also have six player tokens within the middle that will be used to take these actions, as well as a player marker that, that will be placed as soon as you take your first turn. On your first turn, you firstly choose an action. That could be one of six. The first three at the top are element actions. If an element isn't displayed on the card of Marseille, but you want to use it for one of your feats of magic, you can place a disc in one of these three slots to enable those elements to be used in the game. Remember, it's only for that one turn. So, let's say this, is a, this has been revealed as a mountain element, but I want to use trees and wind. Therefore, I would choose to place my token into this section here, which will allow me to utilise the wind and the tree elements. You could, however, choose to use a different action. This action here is the King's Road. Take the King's Road and it will allow you to move to any location across the board. If you wanted to try and increase your magicianship and your utilisation of elements, you could choose to take a Book of Magic. As mentioned, the Books of Magic enable you to create more elements from a single one, so these could be vital in your success. Finally, you could choose to use a unique action, which is unique to each player. In this case, Jonathan Strange has a unique action where he can place one additional element of his choice once he's performed magic. We'll get to that bit in a second. For this turn, we're going to take a look at our cards. And I've already taken a look, and I'm going to decide that we're going to choose a unique action. I'll tell you why in a second. Next up, we can take our next actions, which are visits. When at the visit stage of your turn, you can choose to move up to two spaces while also fulfilling up to two invitations or introductions. In this case, we're going to look at our hand of introductions and invitations and see that we've got a mix of locations. I've decided I want to start by growing my prestige to open up more opportunities throughout the game. If I'm to fulfill this introduction, it would gain me two prestige points, but I have to be in Paris in order to fulfill it. Well, it's the start of the game, which is perfect because a player gets to choose exactly where they start. So let's move our token over to Paris. As soon as we've done that, we can take the card, discard it, and fulfill it allowing us to move our token up two spaces on the track. Once we've done that, we could potentially fulfil another introduction or invitation, but we're going to stop there because we've got a vital hand of cards that we can use to perform a feat of magic. As mentioned, we have an ideal hand of cards. We can now do magic. That's the next stage of the turn. And as you can see, we have three cards left in our hand, two of which have the mountain symbol, the symbol that is the element that we can use this turn as dictated by the card of Marseille. If you want to perform magic, you simply use the cards with the elements of the, cho of the chosen choice as long as they match the card of Marseille or one of the element actions that you've taken on your board and you simply discard them as you would do if you were fulfilling an introduction or invitation 
and that enables you to take the element tokens as dictated by the card, in this case, two mountains. We can then place them on any feat of magic that we have above our board. Look at this, we have a card that allows us to put three mountains down to fulfil it. The topography of Spain rearranged no longer resembles any map. That is one feat of magic, moving land. We've got two mountains, let's pop them down there. But look, we've been clever this turn. We've taken a unique action. That unique action allows us to place an additional token of our choice onto any feat of magic. That's including elements that aren't shown on the card of Marseille or something that we haven't taken an action for. Obviously in this case, we've taken a unique action so we couldn't utilize those spaces. But there's no need. We're gonna take another mountain and place it on this card. Success, we have fulfilled and completed a feat of magic. Completing feats of magic, as described beforehand, will increase your magicianship throughout the game. In this case, you can look at the top of the card in the left corner and you can see that we've gained three magicianship from that card. Once we've obtained that magicianship, keep it secret, don't let the other players know, and discard the other tokens. Place it face down in front of you and you are also lucky enough to obtain a spell for, into your hand. For the final stage of your turn, it's up to you whether you confront the fairy or not. Remember, you can only confront the fairy in four different years, 1811, 1813, 1815 and 1817. As mentioned, the fairy will increase in power throughout the game, dictated by the cards of Marseille. In this case, in this turn, he's actually increased two spaces. If we were to compare our magicianship to that of the fairies, pretending that we were actually in year 1811, we would of course win, because we have a magicianship of three, as we've completed this feat of magic, as opposed to the fairies two. Unfortunately, we're far too early on in the game in order to take on the fairy, but it's as simple as that. Compare your totals. If you are better than the fairy, you win. Even if you're equal to the fairy, you will defeat him and the game ends. If you are lower, unfortunately, there's no effect and the game continues. You will draw the number of invitations as dictated by the card of Marseille. In this case, it would be just the one. And then you discard down to five invitation and introduction cards in your hand. Five is your hand limit. However, that does not take into account any spells that you may have in your hand. Finally, you will flip any of the books of magic that you use this turn face up in order to allow you to use them later on in the game. And that's it. That's a turn within Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. It is a fairly simple game. It can be, at times, very admin-based, taking the turns. However, it flows quite nicely. Please check out my full review to understand exactly how this game plays. This is, of course, just a very quick introduction and how to play of this game. If you'd like to find out more, then please do let me know in the comments down below and check out my unboxing and review videos for this game. I hope you've enjoyed this new format and I'll be doing plenty more throughout the coming weeks and months. Please recommend games you'd like to see how to plays for and I'll be more than happy to oblige. Thank you very much for watching guys. I do hope you join me again for another video and as always, I will see you all next time.